An atom, like this one, is made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Right now, we see the boundaries of the electron cloud. But if we go beyond the realm of the electrons, deep inside, we'll find the nucleus of the atom. No electrons are here, just positive protons and neutral neutrons. These are much more massive than electrons and make up most of the mass of the atom. The nucleus has an overall positive charge from all of the positively charged protons, and that charge is balanced by the negative charges from the electrons in the surrounding electron cloud. It may seem strange that the protons can be so close to each other because like charges repel. One might expect the protons to go flying off in every direction, desperate to get away from each other. But that's not what happens. There's a force, aptly named the strong force, which holds all of the particles in the nucleus together, including the quarks that make up protons and neutrons. When we specifically look at the binding of protons and neutrons together, we call the strong force the nuclear force. The strong force acts across small distances in the atom, but it's mighty powerful. It's 10 to the 38th power times stronger than gravity is at a femtometer's distance. That's what it takes to keep the nucleus together. Now in chemistry, especially nuclear chemistry, we need to be able to quickly see nucleus numbers on an isotope of an atom. Isotope notation does that job. We write the element symbol from the periodic table, the mass number, which is the number of protons plus neutrons in that isotope, the atomic number, which is the number of protons, and sometimes the net charge of the atom if it isn't neutral. This is magnesium cation, and it's also one of the less abundant isotopes of magnesium. It has 13 neutrons instead of 12. Now you can easily figure out the number of neutrons by subtracting the atomic number from the mass number. Let's practice writing isotope notation. Carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope of carbon. First, we write the symbol. The 14 in the name, carbon-14, is the mass number. And lastly, we need to just look up the atomic number of carbon on the periodic table, and we're done. We don't need to write the net charge, because in this case, it's neutral. Now let's try the oxygen anion using information from the periodic table. The symbol for oxygen is O. The atomic mass is 15.998, which will round up to 16. The atomic number is 8. And lastly, the charge on the oxygen anion is 2 minus, so we put that in the upper right side. And we're all done. Thank you for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.